Uh, I think we've been going a little bit slower on that one. All right. So uh, in real estate transactions, a real estate salesperson has direct fiduciary relationship to the cooperating broker, buyer's agent, sponsoring broker, other salespeople participating in the transaction. A, B, C, or D. Feel free to throw it in the chat or say it out loud. All right. So we got C's, sponsoring broker. So a real estate salesperson has a direct fiduciary relationship to the correct sponsoring broker. Because remember, the, the broker is signed to the client and the salesperson is uh, responsible to the broker who is in, uh, who is, you know, duty to the broker's client. So their directly do, direct duty is to the sponsoring broker. So correct. A broker takes a listing from a seller. In the third month of the listing, the seller had a fatal heart attack. Regarding the listing agreements, which statement is true? The heirs must work with the broker to get the, the state sold. The broker must now reduce the price. The broker must disclose that the seller had the heart attack at the listing, or the broker must remove the sign and lockbox. A, B, C, or D. Got one D. All right, so D's have it, and that is correct. All right, so yes, um, once the anybody in the age or in the agency relationship dies, the agency ends. A licensed real estate salesperson is permitted by law to represent his sponsoring broker only himself as a broker, one or more brokers, or any interested party, A, B, C, or D. A, A's, A's have it, the sponsoring broker only. That is correct. So they work for their broker only. While a listing agent is showing a rental property, it becomes clear that the buyers are about to disclose a confidentiality. They recently won a large settlement in a personal injury case and have unlimited funds to spend on the property. The agent should A, tell the buyer before showing the property not to disclose any confidentiality, or B, owes no duty to disclose to the buyers any relationship between the agent and the seller, is a buyer's agent and will keep the buyer's confidentiality or is a dual agent so it's okay if the buyer tells the agent information? A, B, C, or D? A, anybody else? All right, A's. That is correct. A broker charges a fee to assist parties to a potential real estate transaction in communicating, negotiating, and performing the terms of an agreement. Yet, the broker is not representative of either party. In this situation, the broker would be defined as a seller's agent, buyer's agent, facilitator, or dual agent. So we got C, anybody else? So it looks like might be a little stumped on this. So we got C's, all right, C's. Facilitator, huh? That is correct. So uh, when it's a, a dual agent, it's when they represent both sides. Seller's agent only representing the seller, buyer's agent only representing the buyer. And, and when the broker is just helping the parties, um, the broker is a facilitator. 
So if they're just assisting, they're a facilitator, if they're not actual representation. A person who is known as an attorney, in fact, is someone who has power of attorney, implied authority, special agency, or general agency. A, B, C, or D. Okay, got A's. All right. That is correct. They have power of attorney. So if they're attorney in fact, they have power of attorney. During an initial interview, a buyer signs a buyer's agreement with an agent. The agent begins sending his potential buyer some listings from the MLS and the buyer has the agent show her a few properties. Then the buyer asks the agent to negotiate on her behalf and prepare an offer. When the agent prepares the offer for the buyer, the agent discloses that he represents the buyer. This type of agency is regarded as actual authority, universal agency, listing agency, or ostensible agency. A, B, C, or D. Remember, if you have any questions during any of this, feel free to ask. All right, I see C. Anyone else? No one else wants to jump in there? There we go. All right, I see C's. Okay, so this one is actually incorrect because it's not a listing, it's a buyer. So uh, listing is not, you know, listing agency is with a seller. So this is with the buyer and the agency is actual authority. Um, so, you know, listing agency is broker and a seller. So it's when the principal gives actual authority is when the principal, the buyer gives authority to uh, the representation. Uh, gives authority for representation. So, and universal agency is when uh, it's uh, basically an attorney in fact. An ostensible agency is agency without evidence of authority. So, you know, it's not actual re uh, representation, just plausible representation. So again, uh, this is with the seller. This is when they've given, you know, basically they've given agreement and a authority to the uh, representation. And then universal agency is when it's through an attorney in fact. So that one is incorrect. For a broker to act for more than one party in a real estate transaction without the knowledge and consent of all parties is grounds for disciplinary actions, acceptable as long as no party suffers actual monetary damage or contrary to board of realtor bylaws or ethical. That should be easy for everybody. I think, yep, I see them. All right, good. Correct. Grounds for disciplinary action. Uh, you, you have to give consent. Uh, you have to get consent from everyone involved if you were going to be in dual agency. So the buyer and seller have to agree to it before you actually uh, do it. The best description of principal is one who employs a broker to represent his interest in matters of real estate, a customer, an owner of real estate, or a landlord, A, B, C, or D. Best description of principal. All right, we got A's. All right. Good job. In a listing agreement, the sales agent is described as agent, principal, sub-agent, or buyer's agent. So we just heard what principal is. So we know it's not that. And if the sales agent is who? in a listing agreement. 
Well, I got some discrepancy here. See, it's hard to read in here. Keeps jumping around. C, C, A. All right. We got more on C. So it's subagent. So it's actually correct because subagent is the agent working uh, underneath the listing agent. So the sales agent is the buyer's agent. So remember that they're not the listing agent, they're the buyer's agent. So the when, and I know that's that's a weird term, a lot of people get confused on that. So selling agent um, is actually the buyer's agent, not the listing. You would think selling means they're selling it, but selling is actually the buyer. Listing is the seller, selling is the buyer. So buyer's agent is the selling agent and they would be a sub agent under the broker. So the sales agent is the agent of the broker and then the buyer's agent would be the sub agent under that sales agent. Does that make sense to everybody or any confusion there? All good? All right. Okay, you guys did great on that. Everybody would have passed. There were only a couple uh, in there that kind of stumped you a little bit. So only one actually missed. All right. So let's look at, we did brokerage relationships and license law and rules of the Ohio real estate. So general principles we just did financing. Let's look at contracts again. Well, let me let me open it up to the group. Any uh, any requests? Any requests where anyone's having any any issues or uh, feeling like they could use a little help in that area? Going once, going twice, and sold. We're doing contracts. All right. Okay. If the buyer in contract for deed, a land contract, who has paid less than 20% of the purchase price defaults the seller may initiate for forfeiture proceedings, initiate foreclosure proceedings, file a judgment lien, or wait 10 days and then sell to someone else. So this is a land contract, and they've paid less than 20% on the purchase. So what can the seller do? So we got a B, got an A, well now we got a B. All right, there we go. That makes it easier to see. All right. All right, so we got a split. We got C, B, A, and B. So we got two Bs, a C and an A. All right, I'm gonna go with the one with the majority. And that is incorrect because it's forfeiture proceedings. So if it's under 20%, uh, the buyer is less than 20%, the seller may initiate forfeiture proceeding uh, 30 days after giving notice. So um, foreclosure proceedings are required if uh, they've made more than 20% of the purchase price of, you know, if they've given more than 20%. So under 20%, they're forfeiting it. Over 20%, it's a foreclosure. So just remember that 20% mark. Think, uh, you know, more involved in a foreclosure uh, so if they have more in, in the game, more skin in the game, there's more involved in a foreclosure. Uh, if there's less than 20%, they just give it up. It's forfeiture. 
Okay. A buyer makes an offer to buy a house for $50,000. The seller does not accept the offer, but responds that he will accept no less than $55,000 for his house. The seller has just made an option, unilateral enforceable contract, a bilateral enforceable contract, or a counteroffer. All right, excellent. Counter offer, that is right. A large mirror that a buyer wants to remain with the property should be agreed upon verbally with its price stated in the contract, never be included in the sales contract or be identified as a fixture in the sales contract or be disregarded as having no consequence. Got a C, anyone else? C, 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 senor. All right, correct. What is the best explanation of an option? Document involved in closing real estate transactions. Clause that grants either party the right to cancel the contract provided legal notice is given or legal procedure or action brought by either the buyer or seller to enforce the terms of the contract, or an agreement with consideration granting exclusive rights to buy or lease a property at a given price within a stated period of time. So what is an option? All right, the D's have it. And that is correct. A listing agent shows a buyer a home. The buyer then fills out an offer to buy the home, which the listing agent takes and explains to the sellers. The sellers like the offer and sign their acceptance of it. They then hand the accepted offer to their agent with instructions to deliver the accepted contract back to the buyer. At this point, all of the following statements are true regarding this offer except the listing agent now has possession of the accepted offer. The sellers have not relinquished control of the acceptance. The offer was accepted by the sellers. The accepted offer doesn't need to be communicated or delivered to the buyer. Which is it? I got a D. Mm, that's a tough one and it is correct. So since the listing agent is under the control of the seller, there has not been delivery or communication of the acceptance to be delivered. The contract must be out of possession and control of the party accepting it. Even though the acceptance has left the seller's possession, it has not left their control. They could potentially call the listing agent and tell them to bring back the accepted contract. So the sellers like the offer, sign it and accept it. They then hand the offer to the agent with instructions to deliver the accepted contract back to the buyer. So this is the only one that wouldn't be true. Everything else is true. The scope and purpose of a real estate contract does not include the sale of real property, personal property, fixtures, or a home. That should be an easy one. All right, got two Bs and a C. Another B, all right, Bs have it, and that is correct. So fixtures, uh, you gotta remember, a fixture is anything that's affixed to the property in a way that would make it seem like it would is part of the property and would convey with the property. So it would sell with the property. 
So yes, it would. The purpose of a real estate contract would include fixtures. It's actually on the first page. It's one of the first things on the contract are fixtures. So uh, B, personal property is never under a real estate contract. And actually uh, be careful with that when you're writing contracts, because especially if there's a lender involved, if you put a lot of personal property on a contract, the lender is going to assign a value to that and assume that you did too. And, you know, and the price of the property is going to be reduced by the value of the uh, personal property. A contingent, a, con a condition or a contingency in a contract can be waived by the broker for the buyer, lenders appraiser, broker for the seller, or party benefiting from the condition or contingency. So who can waive it? All right, so D. Okay, so we got these. That is correct. So if you're the one benefiting from it, yes, you can waive it. So, it, you know, so if a condition is included for the benefit of both parties, one party can't waive it without the other's consent. Um, so just remember that you, if it benefits both, one can't waive it, but whoever it benefits can waive it. Which has occurred when a contract has been rescinded and each party returns to the other any consideration that has been tendered, reconciliation, replacement, restitution, or restoration? So I got an A. Any other, any other takers on this one? All right, you got double A's. Reconciliation, incorrect. It's restitution. So think about um, when you're returning, when you're returning mother, money. Uh, so restitution is rescission where the contract is undone. So all consideration returned. So reconciliation is the appraisal process to determine value uh, comparing different approaches. So uh, an appraiser does reconciliation. So uh, that, that doesn't actually have to do with uh, contract being rescinded. Um, and replacement is same thing where it's uh, building replacement for improvements for the same functional economic value. So it is restitution. Restoration uh, is just re, you know restoring a building or a property. So restitution, think uh, restitution when you're giving back money, uh, where you're making it right. Uh, so restitution. So again, reconciliation is an appraisal process. Replacement is also a term on replacing, you know, like for like. So restitution. A purchase and sale agreement stipulates the earnest money deposit be placed in a separate interest bearing account with any interest earned split between the buyer and seller. This is against the law. Okay, because the buyer and seller have agreed to it. Not okay, and the broker should resign the listing, or is it money laundering? I don't know what happened, Sharita. <laughs> I must have missed it. <laughs> Whatever happened. All right. So we got A, B. So we got a split here. Who's going to break that tie? A. All right. Tiebreaker is A saying it's against the law. That is incorrect. Essentially, it's whatever the buyer and seller agree to. 
So remember, as a broker, our job or as an agent, our job is to carry out the client's instructions completely so long as they are legal. And, you know, the law requires that everybody, uh, every broker put it into a non-interest bearing account, um, but does not require that the broker clients use it as a depository. So if they agree to it and it's in the contract and it stipulates where it goes, because remember, earnest money, when it's turned in, where it goes, all those things are written in the contract. So it's whatever the contract states. So uh, just be careful with those because it's whatever they agree to, especially when it comes to earnest money. So if they agree to it, our job is to do what they say as long as it's legal. Which are liquidated damages? An amount the party agrees on to settle a potential dispute, paper money that has been soaked for 24 hours, losses suffered when liquidating a business, or a cashier's check used to empty a broker's trust account. Liquidated damages. All right, we got A's. Everybody's got A's. Correct. They agreed to it, uh, and it's to settle a dispute. A bilateral contract is one that binds both parties to an agreement, binds only one party to an agreement, is void, or is unenforceable. All right, A's have it, and that is correct. Which is not an essential element of a real estate contract? Valuable consideration, offer and acceptance, good consideration, lawful and possess possible objective. So which one doesn't belong? So we got these. Oh, there we go, C. All right. So I think we got a tie between C and D. So I'm gonna go pick C and be correct. Um, so yeah, uh, we already had valuable consideration so we would need valuable consideration and good consideration. Um, so, you know, valuable consideration is money, real estate, jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. That's what it is. Um, you know, good consideration is like love and affection. That's not part of a real estate contract. Um, it has, it's, it's no like value in this form of contract. Um, so that's, you know, so good consideration wouldn't be part of it. And part of a real estate contract, it does have to be lawful and possible objective. The first instrument a buyer usually signs in a real estate transaction is a offer to purchase, listing agreement, mortgage, or deed. Which one do they sign first? Think about the process. What has to happen before everything else? All right, so we got B's and we got A's. B's and A's, B's and A's. So A's have it, I believe, or no, B's have it. Three B's, two A's. Up oh, three A's, there we go. All right, so we're split down the middle on this. Offer to purchase, it's A. Because remember, it says buyer. A listing agreement the seller signs. So the first instrument a buyer usually signs in a real estate transaction is the offer to purchase. So uh, not the listing agreement. So remember, read those questions carefully. 
because that made all the difference, whether it was a buyer or a seller. Earnest money is best described as the consideration for the sale of the property, the commission paid to the broker, a good faith money deposited by the purchaser at the time of signing the offer, the money deposited by the purchaser with the broker seller to pay for the expense of examining title. All right, a lot of C's. I'm gonna go with it and be right. A seller and buyer agree on terms of a purchase and sale agreement and are now waiting for closing to occur. Unfortunately, before closing occurs, the improvements on the property are struck by lightning and totally destroyed. The buyer may accept the property and claim the insurance proceeds, all of the answers listed, accept the property as is, or terminate the contract. What are the buyer's options? All right, bees have it. Correct. You can do any of those. All right, you guys did good on that. So, uh, missed a couple and still 10% uh, over passing. Um, and actually, probably wouldn't have passed for those uh, for the couple that I picked the winning one um, when it was split. So just kind of go back if if you did miss some of those, just look back and and see what it was about it that caused you to to kind of to miss it. So let's look at this one because. This is what gets a lot of people, the license laws. A broker advised a salesperson not to take a listing because the seller did not want anyone to know about a hidden defect in the house. What must the salesperson do? Demand the commission from the broker that would have been earned, tell the seller they cannot take the listing, sue the seller for being unethical, take the listing, but ask the seller not to tell the broker. All right, good job, bees have it. An agent told the buyer that they would have the option of tapping into the new sewer when in fact tapping into the new sewer into the sewer was mandatory. The agent's action violates federal law, code of ethics, license law, or task force on agency. So what do they violate here? They told them they had the option, but it's mandatory. Got C's. Oh, got a B in there. Another C, all right, C's have it. And that is correct, license law. So it's knowingly making misrepresentations. So that's a license law, not an ethics law. Real estate recovery funds claims are limited to what dollar amount? 40, 100, 2,500, or 800? 40,000, 100,000. What are they limited to? All right, A's have it. Correct. 40,000 is the maximum that will be paid in the name of one licensee. An agent is advertising his own property for sale. What information must appear in any advertisements that the agent places in the newspaper? Any close material relationships between the agent and any potential buyer, rate of compensation of other brokers, fact that the agent is also the owner or types of agency being offered. What do you think they have to disclose? All right, C's have it. That is correct. Like I said in the beginning of the call, you are a licensed agent 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A sales agent is advertising his firm's listed property in a local newspaper. 
the sales agent must make sure that the agent's name and the broker's name are in different colored type. Agent's name and the broker's name are in the same font. Agent's name and the broker's name are the same size. Or broker's name appears of equal or greater prominence than the name of the agent, which is Ohio law. Got the D. Correct. A broker's license could be suspended or revoked for what action? Giving a bottle of wine to all clients who bought homes through him last year. Offering a free radio to anyone who signs a five-year lease. Holding a raffle for a TV for all who attended his open house. Or purchasing a homeowner's warranty for all of his sellers as a marketing tool. So D's have it, and that is incorrect. It's offering a free radio. So if it's contingent upon making a lease commitment, it's a violation of license law. Everything else is okay in here. So you can give a client, uh, you can give gifts uh, as closing gifts. Uh, you can hold a raffle for you know anyone who attends an open house. It's a raffle or you can purchase a home warranty for all of your clients. It says to use as a marketing tool, but that's okay. And you can still do that. Um, you know, but again, um, it's, it's for all of his sellers. So it, you, can, you can do that. You can say, hey, uh, you get free photography when you use XYZ real estate company, or we'll clean your house before the end of the sale. You can do all of those things that, for marketing. Um, but when you offer a rate, if you offer something for someone to sign a lease or an agreement, then you're in violation. What would be a violation of Ohio licensing law? Making an earnest money check payable to the seller's broker, making an earnest money che deposit check payable to a salesperson, making the earnest money deposit check payable to the buyer's broker, or making the earnest money check payable to the seller. Which one violates Ohio law? All right, B's. That is correct. At what point must earnest money be deposited into the broker's trust account? Once the offer is accepted, according to the terms of the contract, within 48 hours of the terms of the contract, whichever comes first, or immediately. A, B, C, or D. All right. My people. Just like we said earlier, it's whatever the contract states. A broker and seller agree verbally that the broker will assist the seller in finding a buyer. The broker then finds a buyer for the seller, but the seller refuses to pay the broker a commission. What statement is true? The broker can recover under the statute of frauds. The sales agent can sue the seller for not paying the commission, or the seller must pay the commission, or the broker cannot recover because the listing was not in writing. Which is it? Got B. Anyone else? Who else is jumping into the fray? Oh, it looks like C's are taking it. Oh, and a D to finish it out. All right. We still got majority C. And it is the final answer, D. Way to go. So the list, broker and seller agreed verbally. So, you know, the broker then finds a buyer, the seller refuses to pay. There was nothing in writing. So the seller doesn't have to pay the commission. So a listing must be in writing to be enforceable in the court of law. Um, so it, the statute of fraud applies to real estate contracts, but not listings. 
So if a buyer and seller agree, it can be, you know, you can use the statute of fraud and say that it's uh, enforceable, but because it's a listing, it is not enforceable in a court of law. So the broker can't recover. It was never in, in writing. Under what condition can an assistant talk with a client about the terms of an offer when the client does not mind dealing with the assistant, when the assistant has the authority of the agent, when the assistant has a license to practice real estate, when all of the agents are out of the office? So what gives the assistant the right to talk to the client? Oh, we had another D that came up. I didn't see that last D. That would have been the, the tiebreaker. Ooh, somebody threw a V in there. Nice. <laughs> Just taking it, thinking outside the box like that. <laughs> All right, let's go with C. All right, when the assistant has a license, that is correct. All right, what language does state statute require in a listing agreement? Full legal description of the property, definition of steering, Explanation of fair housing law or a statement that block busting is illegal. So in a listing agreement, what has to be in there? And it looks like, oh, somebody threw an A in there for good measure. And it looks like the D's have it. Yes, blockbusting. So blockbusting is required on all listing agreements. And that is, um, you know, so full legal description isn't actually required, um, only the address. So under Ohio civil rights law, blockbusting must be in there. All right, a closing occurred on September 30th, 2012. Under Ohio licensing law, the soonest the broker can dispose of the file is September 30th, 2019, September 30th, 2015, same date 14, same date 12. When can they dispose of the file? How long must they hold on? How long, how long, how long? Got some bees in there. Yep, bees run it. Correct. Three years. Have to hold on to it for three years. An auditor appointed by the Ohio Superintendent's Office asked to review a broker's records. What must the broker make available? The broker's income tax records, sales contracts, listing contracts, whether sold or not, broker's personal property taxes, or sales contracts, but not listings. Which do you think they want? The auditor or the Ohio superintendent? What do you think they want to see? All right. Bees have it again. Good job. When would a license be considered inactive? When the broker dies? When the salesperson fails to turn in proof of CE? When the salesperson directs the broker to return the license to the division? Or when the salesperson does not have a transaction within the mandated period of time? So when would it be considered inactive? Ah, this is a stumper, apparently. Got to see, see. All right, C's have it. That is correct. So inactive is a voluntary status that's initiated by the salesperson. So when it's, when it's not voluntary, so say you don't turn in CE, you're suspended. So it has to be a voluntary status. So inactive means you 
initiated the, the status change. When a broker does not wish a salesperson to continue with this company, the broker must tell the agent and then return the license, must send the agent a letter within three days of sending the license back, must tell the agent 30 days before sending the license back, or is out of luck, the license may not be returned. A, B, C, or D. All right, we got an A, a couple A's. And a B. Anybody else? Two A's and a B. All right, I'm gonna go with the A's. We have the majority. And that is incorrect. It is the B. So you must send the agent a letter within three days of sending the license back. So, um, you know, if the broker chooses to return the license, you must tell the agent immediately and also must send the agent a letter within three days of returning the license. So. The salesperson asked that the broker return her license to the division of real estate so she may transfer to a new broker. The sales agent makes the request in a certified letter, but after 10 days, the broker has not mailed the license to the division. What is true? Since the broker owns the agent's license, the broker may decide whether or not to return the license to the division. The sales agent will lose her license. The sales agent must wait for the broker to return the license, or the broker could lose his license to return for failing to return the sales agent license. D, correct. What law requires a broker's license to be placed in close proximity to the Federal Fair Housing Poster, the Federal Fair Housing Act, Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, Ohio Civil Rights Act, or Ohio Licensing Law? So what law requires it? Anybody else? All right, that is correct. Ohio licensing law. A lot of people get confused because then they figure fair housing poster and they do federal fair housing act, but it's Ohio. When advertising a listing, a broker offers buyers a $2,000 carpet allowance. What statement is true? The seller can sue the broker for fraud this is unethical as a broker cannot offer inducement. The broker does not need to disclose this inducement because the listing is his and he is not a buyer's broker. Or as long as the broker discloses this inducement in the purchase contract, this is perfectly legitimate. Which is true. True. All right, got D. Got D, and that is correct. As long as you tell everybody, it's not unlawful. So if you disclose it in the contract, um, it's perfectly legitimate. A seller and broker agree upon a listing that would pay the broker a 6% if the broker finds a ready, willing, and able buyer for the seller's home. The broker finds a buyer who meets the seller's terms, but the seller refuses to pay the broker's commission. What remedy can the broker pursue? File a suit for specific performance, sue the seller for unpaid commission, file a complaint with the Ohio Real Estate Commission, or file a lien against the seller's resident for the unpaid commission. What options do you have? Or does the broker have? Any takers on this one? B. Anybody else want to jump in there? All right. B 
bees have it and that would be correct so uh, brokers liens can only be filed on commercial transactions so you can't do it um, so that's why it's called a broker's lien and it's only in commercial um, so you know only the buyer can and only the buyer can sue for specific performance it means that the seller has uh, decided not to sell even though they've gone through the whole process the buyer can uh, can sue for specific performance to make the seller sell um, but yeah as far as the broker is concerned all they can do is file sue the seller for the unpaid commission the seller gave her agent a check for getting her house sold so quickly what must the salesperson do with the check? Give the check back to the seller, give a check to his broker, keep the check regardless of the amount, or the agent may keep the check if less than 10,000. All right, bees have it. That is correct. All right, and it is seven o'clock, we did it. We made it through three of these. So give yourselves a hand. You did pretty great. Um, you know, as far as the test goes, uh, and I don't know how many, however many of you are in uh, Hondros. Uh, if you are, uh, hopefully you saw the email that I sent out today that they are offering uh, study sessions uh, to KW uh, sponsored people. Uh, so they're going to offer a few study sessions to everybody. Uh, so feel free to jump in there too. Uh, any help is good help. So if you want to uh, join one of those, just follow the links on that and uh, you'll be able to hop in their study sessions in uh, addition to our own. Uh, hopefully I'll have another monitor again. And we'll be able to jump back on, do some Kahoot, do some other things. Uh, I'll be able to uh, are there any that